Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you through a step-by-step -step tutorial using Apollo.io for B2B leads, whether you're running a social media marketing agency, uh, whether you're a consultant, a freelancer, whatever you might be, uh, if you're looking to generate new clients and uh, get some new business, then Apollo.io is one of the tools that we use in our business and is the uh, primary B2B tool that we use for lead sourcing in our social media marketing agency. Now, the way that this video is going to differ is that uh, I'm going to pick out two to three uh, hidden elements of Apollo that perhaps you are not already using uh, in your own prospecting campaigns. Now, there's other reviews online uh, about how to use Apollo. Uh, the large majority of the platform itself is pretty easy to use. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just jump on into the platform here and uh, go to the homepage. Now, as you first enter the uh, login dashboard here you're going to get an idea of some of the emails that you've been sending out calls made uh, and various other uh, outreach channels that you might have live for your business um, if you are using those and deploying them from Apollo so we don't actually send out any emails from Apollo we don't use it for calls connected uh, we simply use Apollo for the purpose of prospecting b2b lead data now, there are various steps that you will have to take after actually sourcing your leads on Apollo. Um, you have to go through a process of verifying the data that you've got, including emails and phone numbers. Apollo will do its best uh, to make sure that the emails you are exporting are uh, validated. But oftentimes you have to run them through a secondary tool just to make sure that uh, the messaging you're sending out to the recipients on your list or you know if you're selling products and service via email that you're not damaging your sender reputation and that those emails are actually indeed uh, valid and as verified as they possibly can be so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to minimize my face bring myself over here i'm going to click search now the way that we prospect and the way that we use apollo for our lead gen is relatively straightforward um, the search function here is is useful because what you can do is uh, filter down based on your target avatar and your ideal client and customer profile. And you can get pretty granular with the way that you do that. Now, the way that you can do that is, is relatively uh, standardized. So you can do that through their job titles. Um, you can create persona, personas based on um, how long they've held job positions, whether they are a director of the company or a co-founder or chair of the board, whatever it might be. Um, you can also filter for the standardized uh, filters here such as location, number of employees and things like that. So what I'm going to do is just show you exactly what we would do uh, in our social media marketing agency if we were starting from scratch to try and find leads. Now the first thing that we have actually uh, need to do is, is go over here onto the left uh, and we need to make sure that within our search we're excluding contacts from all of the lists that we have already saved and created. Uh, the way that you do this is by going to your advanced settings, uh, clicking exclude and then selecting here whatever the list is that you want to avoid. The reason this is important is that when you have created all of your filters here and you've actually got a list of leads populated here that you want to save and then export using your credits, you don't want to be doubling up on uh, exporting contacts and in essence paying for those contacts if you've already exported them through previous lists. So the first step here is to select your list that you've already uh, searched for, so you exclude those individuals. Now the second thing that we do here is we've got two uh, personas set up. Now when we are reaching out to uh, companies, whether you have a Facebook ads agency or you're doing outreach for e-commerce, whatever it might be, um, you obviously want to be making contact and, and pushing engagement with the decision makers at those companies. Now, the decision maker might wear different hats. Um, they might take many different forms. But if we click this example here and then go into edit, you're going to be able to see some of the parameters that we've set for decision makers in this specific um, location and vicinity here. So this one is for uh, decision makers, DMs in the UK with uh, employees from 1 to uh, 20. So their company has less than 20 employees in total. Um, we're not selecting any industry keywords or anything uh, like that yet because that's what we do in the next step here. Um, but in terms of narrowing down who the decision maker is in the uh, company that you want to work with, you obviously, for a UK, you've got to use UK specific job titles. So managing director, director, owner, founder, CEO, co-founder, chief executive, director, partner, whatever it might be. 
Um, there's a number of different job titles that you are going to want to exclude as well. So you might include director here, but you want to make sure that you're not getting leads through for marketing directors or tech directors or sales directors, things like that. Uh, again here, just creating these personas makes it a lot easier for you to filter through your ideal prospect lists. Um, you know, you can create decision makers UK or US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, whatever it might be. Um, and also you can toggle here for the number of employees in those companies. So the second thing that we make sure we do uh, on Apollo is we go over to the industry and the keywords section. Now, what you want to make sure with all of the B2B leads that you're downloading, you've got to bear in mind that these individuals are probably being hammered by thousands, if not tens to hundreds of thousands of other people in the same position that you are. They will um, be probably getting hundreds to 200 emails a day, depending on the size of the company, um, from people trying to sell them cold email, um, you know, Facebook ads, PPC, SEO, whatever it might be. And the reason for that is that accessing a platform like Apollo has incredibly low barriers to entry. I think it's $99 per month for one of the basic plans. Uh, so it's easy for everybody and anybody to access all of this data and uh, therefore export it. So just uh, skipping past industry and keywords, I'm going to come back to this just in one moment. The, the, the third sort of hidden element of um, narrowing down your leads list within Apollo is within the technologies. Now, when we were running our email marketing agency, um, one of the core, I guess, character traits of the brands that we were working with was whether they were using email marketing already um, and whether they actually had any of the email service provider platforms actually already set up on their websites. So one of those is Clavio. And Clavio is the platform that we build out all of our uh, email infrastructure for, for our clients with. And um, what you want to do here in the technologies um, section of, of the, uh, the search filter is, is toggle for the pieces of tech that are going to help you personalize those emails. So simply by having uh, Clavio in the technology box here, what we're able to then go and do within our emails is actually name the technology as one that we know the website, their website already is evidence and showing. Uh, so we're able to say, you know, hi, first name, um, saw that your Clavio account was set up a year ago, whatever it might be, da 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 da, you know, and hit them with your offer. Now, that from a, a singular technology point of view is, is relatively simplistic, straightforward, um, but you can use that as a top level to then filter down and become much more granular in who you're targeting. And the way that you can do this and, and the way that that dictates um, your, the, the pools of the list of leads that you're reaching out to uh, is going to be dependent on the tools that they're using and therefore how personalized you can be with that. So we might be able to search here that um, uh, we need e-commerce uh, e-commerce stores for the big three. We're going to go uh, WooCommerce and then big commerce as well. And then uh, what we're going to do here um, is search we've done that the wrong way around. So here we go. Clavio is what we want to include across uh, uh, across the board. So we are going to put this in here for include all. And then for the either or technologies, we want the big three e-commerce platforms, Shopify. Let's race through this. WooCommerce, a space there. Big Commerce. You might want to add uh, Magento as well. And then what this is going to do is basically throw out all of the uh, brands within the parameters that you've already set, uh, whether you, you've set you know, 1 to 10 employees, 11 to 20, 51 to 100, whatever it might be, uh, the types of decision maker, the point of contact that you're reaching out to, the, their job titles, location, so if you're doing this in the UK, wherever you might be. Um, and then what this is going to do is take all of those elements, blend them together, and then it's going to throw out uh, outputs here for the leads that all of which use Clavio, um, but the platform e-commerce wise that they have their website built on might differ. So this means that you can potentially widen your net. You can go out to uh, a larger number of leads here, 2.1 thousand leads um, that you know have already got Clavio set up as a tool on their website. Uh, but at this stage, it's probably, you know, you're not looking to personalize the emails in terms of the e-commerce platform that they're actually using. Perhaps it's irrelevant. Um, it's up to you depending on what your services and what your offer is. So 
those are two to three just uh, very quick uh, elements there. And like I said, I jump back just over here into uh, the industry and the keywords. Now, selecting the industry through Apollo, uh, there are pros and cons. Okay, so you might look from this list here that uh, you might notice that there's a lot of different niches and verticals listed. And you might think, wow, that's incredible. You know, I can reach out to retail companies or restaurants or sports companies, sporting goods companies, whatever it might be. But what you've got to realize and taking a step back from this is that retail is a, a, a vertical that includes thousands of different niches. You know, and your outreach uh, being personalized to, you know, a jewelry retail store or a garden furniture or e-bike store, all of those uh, outreach mechanisms and the copy that you use and the protocols that you have behind those client acquisition strategies are all going to differ. And if you go out to leads with retail as your personalized variable, uh, your conversion rates and engagement rates, clicks and opens are going to really suffer um, because it's going to look like the messaging that you're sending out is just generic and it's not specific to the recipient and who's reading the email. So one way of tackling that is by first selecting the uh, industry so let's say sporting goods we know that these are companies that have a e-commerce platform um, behind them so they're not uh, you know sporting goods memorabilia or sporting goods agency or um, you know research they are actually e-commerce retail stores but the one thing that we want to do here to further refine uh, to further refine the the uh, pool of leads that we're actually building here is to include or exclude a list of uh, keywords. So we're going to toggle here social media description as well and the SEO description to pick out anything on their website and it might be that you're looking for uh, retail stores that sell online um, in the football niche. Okay and you're going to find that your leads lists get further condensed here and the reason there's only five is that we've only selected a couple of protocols here. Um, the more you play around with this uh, you're going to find that the size of your leads list uh, will grow and, uh, and shrink. But uh, incorporating the um, industry alongside specific keywords uh, is something that's gonna really help you get a much gra more granular picture of uh, the leads and your target avatars that you're trying to uh, reach out to. All right guys, so just two, three very quick tips there. Make sure that you've created a persona for decision makers. Uh, make sure that you have set the industry, um, but you've also underpinned that search criteria with positive keywords and then keywords that you are excluding. Um, and then make sure you're always toggling for technologies. Don't just choose one technology like WordPress, get as granular and as layered as you possibly can be. And then what you'll find as a result is that your leads lists are incredibly refined. Most of the emails that you're gonna find within those are uh, verified. Um, and that the results that you get from your cold outreach, whether you're doing it through email or LinkedIn or cold calling is gonna be uh, much higher converting than if you were just to blast out random emails to random people. All right guys, so just another quick video there. Uh, be super, super grateful if you've got value from this or any of my other videos um, that you could subscribe. There'll be a link below in the description. Let me know if you've got any questions uh, by leaving a comment below and we'll catch up in the next one. All right, cheers guys.